Hi, my name is Ryan Languish, and this is Ludo Lodge, where I'm creating content to help spark growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to modify components within Tabletop Simulator, kind of in two different contexts. So one is in the context of legacy games. So if you've ever heard of a legacy board game, or if you haven't, um, it's essentially a game where permanent changes are made to the game during play or that, that last between plays of the game. So that could mean things like ripping up cards or writing on components um, or having stickers that you place um, onto other components. And so that's kind of evolved into a new genre of, in modern board gaming of legacy games. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how some of these things could be used if you were prototyping a legacy game in Tabletop Simulator. Um, but the other thing that kind of these uh, techniques come in handy for is simply rapid iteration. So if you're working on a game, if you can make some quick changes to cards or adjust the balance of something in Tabletop Simulator without having to like regenerate images and re-import them in, being able to do that on the fly is just going to allow you to be able to test and iterate a little more quickly. Um, so that's another way that these kinds of things can be used um, to just improve your workflow um, and help you make better games more quickly. So the first and probably most obvious thing, and I'm going to pull out just a deck of standard cards here for my example. Um, the most obvious example is suppose you were making like a legacy game and a component needs to be removed from the game. Like you can just delete it, right? Tabletop simply you can just click delete, it's out of the game, you could put it to the side. So that's pretty trivial, right? Um, another thing though that you might happen, and this is more on the side of, um, of quick iteration and balancing of things, is you might decide, you know what this game needs, is this, you need to have more nines of hearts in the deck. You know, it makes more sense with, with a game that maybe you have like a bunch of cards that are coins. Like if you think of a game um, like Dominion or Star Realms where there's kind of duplicates of the same card, and the frequency of that card in the deck is part of the balancing of the game. Well, you can simply copy components and paste them, and now you have more of that card, right? So that's pretty straightforward. That shouldn't come as a huge surprise that those things are easy to do um, in this digital environment. But one other thing you might want to do is maybe it's not so much that... I want another card, but I actually want to change something about this card. So maybe it's that I'm writing on something in a legacy game, or maybe I'm simply adjusting a cost of a card or something. Like maybe this shouldn't cost nine, it should cost seven. It's, it's a little weaker than I thought. So one way you can do this is using the drawing tool. So the drawing tool, you have this pen here that lets you, you know, draw some different shapes. Um, and the important thing to know with the drawing tool is that by default, it is going to draw onto the table. So if I, for example, change this to, um, let's just do, let's do like blue and apply, and I try to draw on this card, you'll notice it isn't doing anything. And the reason for that is because it drew it all on the table, <laughs> right underneath the card, which sometimes might be what you want if you just want to like mark some things on the table or, or you know do a mark an area or something or maybe on the fly you have like a player board or something that you don't want to actually import a board you're just going to kind of use rectangles and stuff to to show the area but maybe i actually want to write on this card for whatever reason to do that all i need to do is lock it so if i go to toggles and select lock that's now going to make it eligible to be drawn on. And that can be, uh, there's a shortcut of just the L key to do that as well. So locking means I can't move this around while it's locked. Um, but now I can come in and select this tool. And I could say, you know, this should actually be eight. Now the nice thing about that is it sticks to the card. So if I unlock this now by pressing L, like that is a part of this card now, which is exactly what I want um, in instances where I'm writing on the card. So this allows me to do things like balancing costs or writing things on cards in a legacy context. Um, it's a little sloppy, right? Like it kind of depends on me how I can draw it with the pen tool on the card. Um, but in most cases with those applications, like it doesn't need to be look that great as long as you you can tell what's going on especially in the context of rapid iteration like as long as you can tell um it's not really going to matter you're going to eventually make updated versions of the cards afterwards 
So one thing you might think is, okay, well, instead of having to draw the, the number, what if I use the text tool? You know, because we can use the text tool to type things such as numbers, right? Um, accidentally create too many. So suppose I wanted to do that, and you know, I did the same thing. I'm gonna lock this card in place, and then I'm gonna use the text tool and come here. I'm gonna say eight. Um, unfortunately, the text tool doesn't let you like drag it around after you've placed it. Kind of obnoxious. But what is also obnoxious is that that doesn't work. The text tool always anchors to the table, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's just worth knowing that you're not going to be able to use the text tool to draw in components um, and add text. If you work on Tabletop Simulator and you're watching this video, I think that would be a great feature to add is the ability for text to basically work like the drawing tool and be able to draw in cards. Because that'd be pretty useful to be able to, you know, draw a little rectangle and, and adjust the card text, card abilities or other types of things. Or just do things like this balancing a little easier without having to draw it out. But as it stands right now, if you're wanting to um, add information to cards or other components, you want to lock it, and then you're going to want to use the drawing tools, that, which could be the pen, the freehand pen, or it could be some of these, these shapes. Now, the other thing that's common in legacy games specifically is the idea of stickering um, components. And Tabletop Simulator actually provides a nice way to do this in their decal tool. So their decal tool lets you import images as different decals and then lets you just stamp them onto things. So let's go into that and click it. And it's going to show me all my decals I have, which in this case is none. And I'm going to create a new one by naming it. Um, let's name this star. And then I'm going to come to my desktop and I'm going to bring in this star image. Just store it locally and import. So it's going to import, and now I have this star here. If I wanted to edit any of the options on there, I could. But if I select this, um, and it says it's selected there, I can just come in and stamp it. It's, it might be a little hard to tell, but it's actually hovering. Um, you can see kind of the silhouette of where it's going to stamp. And I can just stamp on the table. So there's a nice uh, star that's stamped on the table. If I ever wanted to unstamp it, I would just click on it with the stamp tool to remove it. Um, so this is nice because I can do this on, on cards. So if I add this to the card and then switch back here, it stuck to the card. And in fact, I didn't even need the card to be locked in that case. I guess the decal tool is a little bit more dynamically intelligent in determining what it should be attaching to. Um, but that effectively works just like drawing on it that it's going to be um, just part of the card at this point. So if you had a legacy game that had stickers, all you would have to do is import those stickers as decals, and now they're available to stamp onto whatever you want to stamp. Um, and it's nice, you can use the uh, plus and minus keys to adjust the size of the stamp. Um, so situationally, that might be helpful. Um, so that's a nice feature, but it also works well even with double-sided cards. So um, specifically, I had been working on a, a co-design for but Button Shy had an 18 card legacy game contest, which was what kind of brought up some of these ideas of how to do legacy concepts in Tabletop Simulator. And in that game, um, we were using double-sided cards. And so I'm actually going to import um, the deck here that we um, were using in the game. So I'm going to import this here. Um, and I have a video on... Um, importing cards into Tabletop Simulator. If this process isn't familiar to you, um, I can link that up above if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm just going to quick go through this to just pop this into um, with the settings that I know that I have my specific images set to. So I'm going to load this in, and this is kind of what our cards looked like in this game. And they were double-sided, so the sides are unique um, on each side. And because it was a legacy game, we had this, I, this concept of you were going to be adding stickers to cards. And so, for example, you would maybe come in and add a star to one of these cards. And so I'd come in and be like, okay, this square is going to have a star now. And so now for the rest of the game, that affected how this you know, room worked in the game. But the nice thing, which is good to know if you're using decals, is it does work properly even if you have... Um, double-sided cards. So maybe I import another thing here. I'll call it target. 
um, and um, it's called objective here because that was what it meant in the game. And we import that. We have our second decal here. I'm going to select it, size it how I want, and then stamp it. And now at this point, I have um, a double-sided card, and both of those stamps stay on it. So it's useful, and you can add as many stamps as you want to any set of cards. And this doesn't just work for cards. You can put it on other components as well. One little gotcha with this is that when you stamp the cards and then put it back in a deck, the stamp disappears. All the stamps will disappear. So, you know, when it's in the deck, it's essentially showing a preview of the image that's on the top. And Tabletop Simulator doesn't render those stamps, those decals, in that preview, which is a little unfortunate because that could matter in a game um, where maybe like you're able to look ahead at what's on top of the deck and it's like, oh, this looks a certain way. And then we actually bring it into play and it's like, wait a second, that wasn't there. Which at least it keeps the decals. Like when it comes out, it's not like it's getting rid of them. It's just not going to show them while it's a part of the deck. So good, good little gotcha to know. Um, but for the most part, you can you can get a lot done with just having some decals and, and being able to stamp them in, whether that's for a legacy game or just something that you want to iterate quickly. Um, we have a game that we're working on now that we're playing around with a bunch of these kind of different sized rectangular tiles that the squares on the tiles are going to have different icons or things that different mean mean different things in the game and it's kind of a puzzly thing and we we totally could just get in tabletop simulator with a bunch of blank tiles load in all the different possible icons we could be using as our decals and then on the fly just make different variations of them or balance them i don't have to ahead of time necessarily make all those variations to load in as images um, so being able to kind of do that and find the balance and then go to make kind of some prototype graphics for it is kind of a nice feature. And that's all I have for dynamically modifying components in Tabletop Simulator. Hopefully this was helpful or maybe gave you some things you hadn't thought about before. Um, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Um, I have a lot of videos on Tabletop Simulator already. If you check out the playlist linked in the description, and I'm going to be making more as well. But for now, I will see you in the next video.